the 5th of March 2020. This one will be in English. Um, yesterday, David Sidman, one of the um, editors of Breaking Israel News, published um, a new article. Netanyahu wins election after rabbi predicts he will be Israel's last prime minister before Messiah. So, we see a Benjamin Netanyahu and then um, together with Yair Bolsonaro on April 1st, 2019. Um, now we get a whole story that um, Benjamin Netanyahu gets 36 votes, 33 votes for... So now... Then we come to the story. That's because Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, one of the most influential Sephardic spiritual leaders of the century, who passed away in 2006 at the age of 106, met with Netanyahu in 1997 during his first term as prime minister. So Rabbi Kaduri whispered a long message. La, okay, so now the whole idea with uh, Rabbi Kaduri goes for quite some time. Mm. One of the big issues here is that Kaduri said that, um, that he expected the Jewish Messiah to arrive soon and that he had met him a year earlier. So that means 2005. So... In um, 2018, Breaking Israel News reported the opinion of Rabbi Levi Sudri noted the many parallels between the current Prime Minister and Jonathan, the son of Biblical King Saul, now whether he was a Benjamite. So Sudri suggested that um, Netanyahu is serving the function of Moshiach ben Yosef, Messiah from the house of Joseph, the first half of the two-stage messianic process. So, Moshiach ben Yosef is a practical Munden process that includes the ingathering of the exiles and building up of the land of Israel. The second stage, Moshiach ben David, Messiah from the house of David, is a miraculous process that includes the re-establishment of the Davidic dynasty and the completion of the third temple. So, now, the whole issue here is why do all these nations join, join Israel? Because all these nations, especially Brazil, they, of course, believe in Jesus. And currently, we don't talk about Jesus. No? Um, but we have to do so because... Mm, Below is the Lubavitcher Rebbe instructing a young Netanyahu to expedite the coming of the Messiah. So, this is Benjamin Netanyahu with the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Here with Bolsonaro. Now, we have here um, an older article from January 7th. Also, it's by Yair, the guy, because the guy is called Yair. So, now we have the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So, I switch here to my photos. This is when I um, do, 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 do. was in Brazil in February 2012. This is where I celebrated my 45th birthday, where Moshiach ben Yosef is supposed to die. Now I actually took where I, where is this? I took a one dollar note with me. Look, here it is. Do, do, do. So I came from Berlin. I was at the Berlinale uh, talking to, uh, to a couple of friends of mine. Do, 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 do. Where is it? Berlinale. I have it in this photo. So, I was with Christian Helsi Salomon, the son of Michael J. Salomon, uh, 2012. And some of the guys, you know, told him, yeah, I'm going to Brazil. And so he gave me this $1 note. And then from uh, there on, ish, uh, things happened. Now, <clears throat> concerning the Moshiach, beep, 2013, well, uh, this guy came and caused major havoc and he was sold as the messiah 
No, people uh, actually bought it. So now the Moshiach Ben Yosef is a crazy guy, and he grew up in the south on Kwa Etzion, where you can actually it's right opposite of the new American embassy coming on a white horse. <laughs> so now. Mm. Here I work at the International Christian Embassy and several years ago now there is this big German link um, what's happening right now in Israel and um, already quite some time ago well I said you only have to take a look into the Bible Christian Zionists evangelicals and so on and so on when I'm going to Zechariah 9 so we have here first the connection between Gaza the Palestinians and the return the return of the king to Zion rejoice greatly daughter of Zion shout daughter of Jerusalem see your king comes so we we're always the question riding lowly on a donkey, on a fall of a donkey. Yes, I came very poor and I just came because I love the land. And I did my spiel. And things my bob. And then things developed with various issues concerning Ephraim. No? Because this is the only verse, I will bend Judah as I bend my bow and fill it with Ephraim. I will rose your sons of Zion against your sons Greece and make you like a warrior's sword. So if we talk in any way about a Moshiach ben Yosef, a ben Yosef, well then this is Ephraim. So in connection with Zion, there is only one verse in the Bible where the word Judah and Ephraim and your sons of Zion, the Zionists, are mentioned in one name, in one verse. Mm. Now the Christian Zionists, they believe it's Jesus. And already in one, yeah, in the beginning of 2015, I received a call from Dr. Jürgen Bühler and I told him, Yogi, we're in a strange situation, but um, what can I say? Jesus is not coming anymore. It will be your friend Ulf Diebel from Düsseldorf as Ephraim. And um, so back then, 2050, 15, it was quite a big of a, an issue. I sent to Rabbi Abraham Feld various um, information but uh, was not able to come to Germ uh, I was not able to come because of an, because of a parallel um, what can I say event in Jerusalem on my 48th birthday. So it developed um, so this is uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Now this is my first edition of the Israel Monthly from, uh, or my second edition from November '98. Mm, so I grew up parallel as um, publisher and uh, was always overlooked because mm, of an issue concerning Jesus. I said uh, very early on in the ICEJ, in the International Christian Embassy, I said, okay, no, mm, Ephraim is a um, very sad um, name in the Bible, but people in the Christian Embassy said, no, it's, uh, it's not existing anymore, and they, they started developing anti-Ephraim uh, theology. Now, when you read this today, this is from David Parsons, uh, already from an article in 2010. So when you read this today, it's anti-Semitic. It's anti-Semitic because you just have to replace Ephraim with Judah and then everything what they write becomes anti-Semitic smear pieces. So, but, um, no. 
I made this presentation already um, beginning of 2018 after the end of the abomination of desolation. Mm. And I'm looking right now here for my... Um, So, so we have a currently with the house of Joseph, we have a house of Joseph in, in Israel, but a lot of people don't understand, okay, there was one firstborn, there is really one firstborn, Ephraim is the firstborn, Jeremiah 31.9, I told this uh, very early on, and they said now if, uh, we have to work some stuff out. <clears throat> So while I celebrated my 48th birthday in Berlin, blowing the trumpet and said, okay, I'm Ephraim priest of the order of Melchizedek, this happened parallel in Israel. So the first national Bnei, Bnei Yosef conference took place. Now by that time, Kolatur was already uh, split away from um, the lines of um, Avra, um, Ephraim Frank and people like this. So from afar, I had to watch what actually happened and uh, take a look what uh, you know developed. <laughs> what developed. Mm. So by the time I turned fifty, mm, what can I say? It was the biggest confusion ever. And I said, okay, I will. Um, stick with my orthodox friends. So um, I contacted Avraham Feld quite early on. So this uh, picture here from 1992. So he also stayed with the rebel. And so while Benjamin Netanyahu mm, okay, made his way as a prime minister, okay, Avi made it in the tent drivers. <laughs> so he works with Kolatur. So currently here with uh, Ovatya Avrahami, and he takes care of basically, I think, everybody who's coming from the nations and go, coming from Hebrew roots and so on and so on. And he takes care of uh, quite some social uh, justice issues in, um, in Jerusalem. So here, this is 2005 with Yair Davidi, and they both were present while I made the Declaration of Independence of the Nation of Ephraim. Because of Dr. Jürgen Bühler, the, um, you know, um, so he already on my 40th birthday said something very, very significant that I didn't honor Jesus. But then in, on the 9th of uh, March 2015, so that is now five years ago, so he gave me basically a very, very nasty and uh, um, a very nasty answer after I told him, I said, listen, Jesus is not coming anymore. It's me as Ephraim. So he accused me that I did not like Nebuchadnezzar. So I told him I'm the tree in the middle of the earth, you know, for four years. Uh, for seven years, I was cut off. Yeah. So a tree which is built on Torah, this is my booklet already published in uh, 2001. So you go to Amazon, the, the domain Torah.de belongs to me for now 20 years. So, um, and I came from, from Joseph. So I, um, Dr. Jürgen Bühler is part of that publication. And I told him I'm that tree. And he tells me, so, okay, like Nebuchadnezzar, okay, I did, um, what does it says here, like Nebuchadnezzar, when I was already in Israel, I <clears throat> um, was, okay, I rose, I rose against Jesus as God and Lord, and, you know, put myself next to him and um, not even above him. So what he'd actually told me, I said, okay, Nebuchadnezzar, okay, um, 
he denied Jesus as God and Lord. And this is why Nebuchadnezzar was cut off. Okay. And um, so what he was telling is, I have to, you know, you know, I'm not, uh, he basically <laughs> told me because I did not believe that Jesus is God. You know, I have not, no right to fix my stuff with my kids my stuff in Israel and so on and so on and I do not have any rights basically to to talk to him so um, and he said okay I have to read you know um, for my blessings I said I wanted to fix something and so um, I said no I will go to my orthodox friends and at the end I will collect data as much as possible And then at the end, I will ask my, my Jewish friends for help. Okay. So now, um, on 3rd of Feb uh, February, Avram Feld finally wrote like a, a nine-page document about the Trinity. And um, in the meantime, I collected data for five years about anti-Semitic rants of Christians. It is, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. So it's it's too much. And I said, okay, I want to fix my situation here with my friends. I shared also the 40th birthday. So over the last five years, I came, you know, as Ulf, as a listen, guys, you know, I have to fix some stuff. And every time somebody I wanted to fix something, you know, somebody pulled up front. Yeah? I said, yeah, but I could solve for you quite a lot of uh, problems. And people accused me of lying, of um, a lot of stuff. So in the meantime, my neighbor, Eliyahu ben Chaim, who was the godfather, actually, of my daughter, Yael, died. He didn't make it. Um, so I wonder, oh, this Michael, kids from Michael Schneider, So I just wanted to come back to Israel on the 9th of uh, September, on the 3rd of September, or the 2nd of September last year, 2015, 16, 16, so. So, so concerning concerning the Moshiach ben Yosef, the Moshiach ben Ephraim, and so on and so on and so on. This has been, it has been one of the greatest problems that um, Dr. Jürgen Bühler, so when I uh, confronted him in 2013, several times actually, So did some crazy shit. So so here is uh, Dr. Jürgen Bühler on one of his last visits whenever we met him together with my daughter. Here is Waltraud Keil in the back uh, in the background. Unfortunately, she passed. She died already. Now uh, Vesna Bühler sings quite a lot. No, in um, in Israel, we can. Um, and here, this is a short conversation where it's actually we are talking about the the ten tribes, the ten tribes. So 2013, um, already um, the Pope was placed. I was in in Israel in um, during Pesach 2013, 2011. Dr. Jürgen Bühler became uh, president of the United uh, of the um, International Christian Embassy, and I already told him. I said, uh, Jürgen, one day it, we will have a really, really big problem because P Ephraim is written in the Bible, and in the nations there are hundreds of thousands, most likely in the meantime, who strongly believe that the tribes will be uh, will come together, that the tribes will come together. 
And he said, no, this is not true. You didn't honor Jesus and so on and so on and so on. And so he became president and issued and let Malcolm Heading write this Ephraim fable, a theological piece. And it says here, the Ephraimite teaching has infiltrated the Christian Zionist movement and threatens to bring it into disrepute. Meaning that Malcolm Heading, you know, he said that the teaching of Ephraim, meaning a complete biblical issue, infiltrated the Christian Zionist movement. But it was actually the other way around. No? And uh, Murph and Marla Watson, who are um, one of the founders of uh, the International Christian Embassy, and now in contact uh, and also on the mailing list here with Avraham Feld and the tribes and so on and so on, mm. they will confirm that up to, um, here's actually, no, here's Marla, Murph and Marla Singers, Murph and Marla Watson, of Vancouver at the ceremony in Jerusalem to open the Christian in uh, the Ru Jerusalem Christian Embassy. So, Christians numbering 1,000 from 32 nations. So here is Jan Willem van der Hoven also in the back. So um, Jan Willem van der Hoven was given two sticks, two sticks. You know the two sticks in um, in Hezekiel 37, 1980. So I received them. They were standing in my office. In 2017, I already told him, and I said, well, that these are the sticks, were the sticks of Ephraim, and I received it. So this is me 2000, in the year 2000. So at the age of 33, I was born 25567. And um, exactly 19 years after um, Ariel Sharon participated in the operation Bin Nun Aleph. So 19 years later, I was born, and then 33 years later, I'm in. So on that day, Malcolm Heading became director of the International Christian Embassy. So while from me, these products are the word from Jerusalem and the Torah. So Malcolm becomes um, president of the International Christian Embassy, and one year later, okay, stands on the stage and starts uh, rants about Ephraim. So... 2011, this fable became, you know, their their policy, their theological policy, that Ulf Diebel from Düsseldorf and all the Effies, you know, some crazy guys, they have no say in the International Christian Embassy. That meaning that the Catholics, okay, they are part of their the um, the Catholics are their part, have their parts. The Evangelicals and Pentecostal uh, and, and, and Protestants, you know, huge group, that is their part. But now, the Pentecostals and Charismatic, okay, now they decide that they completely reject the Old Testament and that whoever talks anything about that there, that there are physical covenants for Joseph while well, he is a heretic and so on and so on. And this goes into the teaching of the International Christian Empathy through Malcolm Heading. And because now the Zionists, the Jews, back at that time, strongly, it started really with Ariel Sharon and then also with Bibi, it continued, the true friends of Zion in the world, it's, there are very, very few, very few. So when you are in Israel and you become this love from the Christians, well, you take it. Then you take it. You do not consider the consequences. Okay? But now, this is now 20 years ago, the consequences are tremendous and they are felt all over the place. So it start now with uh, here David Parsons. So now we see the connections. Here is Benjamin Netanyahu, David Parsons, and uh, David Parsons. No, now I have to point out that this hand, you know, really slapped me. And this is what I told Yogi. I said, "Listen, Yogi, this is the the point. You know, you beat people." You burn people, you tell people that they are, you know, that they have no value because they do not believe that Jesus is God. And then you drag yourself front in front of the Prime Minister. So, 
this thing went out, I just had to think about that um, everybody who um, is uh, involved in this case has to fly out over Nashville Airport. Nashville Airport because the uh, Malcolm Heading after Dr. Jürgen Müller became president, Malcolm having moved to the United States, to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, where there is the World Outreach Center. And from there, he distributes his type of Christian Zionism to all of America. And they use, of course, the Nashville Airport, which was completely, utterly destroyed um, on the 3rd of March, two days ago. So, here with me, my current. So, in 2011, when uh, Jung became um, president, so he participated in the first invitation, first Christmas, Christmas celebration first Christmas celebration from Israel. So the Israeli government invited all Christian denominations because all Christian denominations have one thing in common, they believe all in Jesus. Now, and the issue is now, nobody, 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 nobody really knows, knew before who this will be, who will be born. So what actually happened, they put in an antichrist. Pope Francis, Pope Francis. Now, in the meantime, the um, the head of the World Jewish Congress, Ronald Lauder, whoops, sitting here. Mal gucken. So sitting here. So put this nicely together. So here's Ronald Lauder from the World Jewish Congress and President Rifflin sitting here next to Jürgen Bühler. In the background, actually, is Susan Michael. Now, Susan Michael was visited by Donald Trump, and Donald Trump signed up for the five principles of U.S.-Israeli relationships. And I said, "Yeah, actually, this is already 2016. You know, this is already 2016." I said, "Guys, you know, um, nobody realizes what's going on. No, it's impossible because Dr. Jung Bühler and the German doesn't say anything. Now we have more Germans who are a bit fucked up." Here, um, Angela Merkel, totally, absolutely catastrophe. Um, then we have uh, Bishop Marx, who just sat down as the uh, president of the Bishops' Conference. Here, Ronald Lauder, Ronald Lauder, Ronald Lauder, and Dr. Jürgen Bühler. So, the um, results that these two guys, you know, continued with their stuff. Here, Mike, um, Michael, Michael Atterbeck, also behind this. So, because they're all fighting, the Jews actually said, yeah, okay, let's go to the Pope. Yeah? Because the Pope, he defines, he defines infallible who Jesus is. I mean, you can, it's like that. So, here we have another issue that, the, uh, the, that we have here a, um, a little emblem. Now, this is the emblem of the Queen. Also, the Queen believes in Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they have like this idea that the queen actually descends from King David. Now they have here the lion and on the right side this is the unicorn. This is Joseph. This is Joseph chained. This, uh, this is the um, sign from the Rothschilds. No? So here Joseph is unchained. Joseph is unchained. And... It happened to be that uh, Ronald Lauder has a, um, a chairman, vice chairman, you know, David Rothschild, and um, basically they, they made a deal for the last years and uh, during the abomination of desolation for three and a half years, this went. So 1,335 days, starting from the day the Pope visits the Temple Mount to um, over when Donald Trump declares uh, Jerusalem as uh, capital. To when is this? Did I have this actually in here? No, I did not. 
So 1,290 days are from the day the Pope steps on the Temple Mount and uh, to the declaration of Donald Trump, Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. These are 1,290 days. Mm. It's not in this presentation where I have this, but... Um, Do I have this? Yes, we do. Yeah. So the Son of God is defined by law in this cookie. So the Pope celebrates the cookie. So the law was done on my birthday, 25567. Here you have the timeline up to my 40th when I left. Then uh, when I was cut off for seven years, then... With my 47th birthday, the Pope comes and starts the abomination of desolation. 1,290 days, Donald Trump declares Jerusalem's capital. 1,335 days, um, first anniversary of Trump's presidency, 20 of January 2018. Now, this is when I uh, made the finished the presentation and already said, okay, yeah, well, Benjamin Netanyahu, um, well, he always says that he um, stands with the Jewish people. No, he represents all of world Jewry. Well, super good. The state of Israel has um, signed a contract, the fundamental agreement between the Holy See and the state of Israel to accept UN Resolution 217, the human rights. And the human rights also include freedom of religion. Now, I hope, you know, at this point it is clear to you that um, when somebody waits for a messiah, then somebody looks for a messiah, that somebody has to be able to tell, yes, I am the messiah. So the religious freedom is very, very important. And uh, Ronald Lauder already, this is not in, in, uh, not in this presentation, well, he went on to, uh, into the Vatican signed uh, and declared, you know, about all, everything about human fraternity, you know, that we are really brothers. And my brother, Dr. Jürgen Bühler, now for five years basically went totally nuts in Israel while I suffered here in Germany um, and suffer under the consequences of the, yeah, what can, what can I say, the digital images of your head coming from my partner Michael J. Solomon in the United States. Mm. So I do have a company and I actually thought I will make a super cool movie, you know, because the world, the whole world has to see when the um, your Messiah comes back, coming through the clouds. Well, make a movie deal, make a movie deal. Um, I thought the best would be with Michael, Michael J. Solomon in the United States, who is unfortunately like um, a Hillary fan and stuff like this. But so quite, uh, so this presentation also went out to the World Jewish Congress. I sent this also to David Rothschild and pointed out that Michael actually, well, not only that I did offered him a $500 million media deal for the whole story, but he is also friends with Bill and Hillary Clinton, with Barack Obama, or John Hagee, Kenneth Copeland, and various other per per people. And I said, well, you just have to pick up the telephone and tell the guys that Jesus is not coming anymore. You have truly just tell them Jesus is not coming anymore. It's, it's Ulf. So I told this also to various other people. And very importantly, I sent an Elijah challenge to Rabbi Avraham Feld. Go and ask him. You know, this is uh, why I think a lot of things developed as they developed and why people are asking, okay, well, where is the Messiah now? No. So it should be said, so we are in a halachic way. Guys, I have an issue. Yeah, I have open issues. I wanted to close in Brazil. I couldn't go there because Yogi says something. I mean, seriously, it goes very, very far. You know, the whole mess mess Messiah issue, it's, it will be extremely ridiculous when we are through with this. Okay, because it's, uh, um, especially breaking Israel news, I do not know how often 
We try to contact them and say, listen, guys, you only have to tell the truth. The big issue is that nobody is interested to tell the truth. Yeah. Um, even when they say, hey, listen, yeah, we have a biblical mandate, even here at the International Christian Embassy, um, I don't know, and the, all the rabbis have said, yeah, you know, we, we are, you know, standing with the scripture and with Torah and so on and so on. But when I come to you and say, yeah, but, but I have here some issues with my kids and, um, you know, we have to solve, nobody is able to give an answer and help because then everybody freaks out. So now, Because this video goes out, you know, in the meantime, I couldn't care less. So the Moshiach Ben Yosef, you know, he tried already. He tried, he tried, he tried. You should really listen to um, the Shiurim from uh, Rabbi Kassim. He will lay it all out for you. What actually happened to the uh, Moshiach Ben Ephraim with Ephraim. And then you just have to follow the lies. And the other hand, in the meantime, we have... Um, Quite interesting. So this is my, my first edition. So Barry Dennison, he used to be the national director of Bridges for Peace. So now he's a, um, he's part of the ICEJ team. Now Ray Sanders, he's an ordained minister with the Christ of Church. Where he's for the Christian Friends of Israel. His wife uh, Sharon, yeah, is very active and um, also appeared here already in Breaking Israel News. They uh, and also with Murph and Marla Watson, so they know each other all. And um, more important, Barry Dennison is very here. He pastored in Brazil for 11 years, so Brazil, the whole Brazil issue, you know, oops, so the whole Brazil issue will be solved. Immediately, it could be solved immediately. Everybody knows each other, but because everybody said, ah, it's not Ulf, it's everybody else, but no, it's not Ulf. So this is why they pull out one story after another, an opinion from another rabbi. Guys, you don't even know what you're talking about. So the Moshiach ben Yosef, now is it now somebody from Joseph, yes or no? So is it now Ephraim, yes or no? So now the Moshiach ben David, okay? So is he, will he come, yes or no, because Moshiach ben David died? This is the whole point about Christianity. This is the whole point of Christianity, that the Messiah ben David died. It took me a while to figure it out. So through him, everybody has life, even the biggest sinner. Ephraim, who was cut off already, Isaiah 7. And then, through the life of this super, this is super miraculous, through the life of this Jew from Nazareth who died 2,000 years, I was resurrected, showed up in Israel, and do have the keys of David. These kids, rejoice, daughter of Zion, rejoice, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king is coming. So, this is the whole issue with The Ben Joseph, he is really, really from Joseph and a miracle guy. I cannot say it otherwise. Bah, it takes quite a bit here. So in Genesis 37, we, we see where Joseph has the dreams and his brothers do not want him to become king. And when he had the dream that suns and stars bowing down to him, well then his brothers started hating him. And this is actually what happened with me. You know, I had my dreams and then my, the people hated me because I had these dreams. And um, the worst thing for me was at the, all the time that they said, yeah, Ulf, you, um, yeah, you, you left your kids and you, um, you, you know, you left your kids. And I said, well, guys, I'm, I'm ready to die for this. And people just didn't even listen, you know. They hammered and hammered and hammered and became anti-Semitic beyond imagination. Yeah? 
especially Christians. In the meantime, also quite a number of you know, people who say they are Jews, but there are actually no Jews. One of these people is um, Josef Werner, who is a part of the mailing list, also from Rabbi Abraham Feld, whom I told the whole Ephraim story. And in the moment I said, yeah, because it's of me, well, he started a, um, you know, a... Um, competitive program, you know, Ephraim Peace Plan runs around as a Jew and grabs people. And it becomes very, very significant disturbing. Very significant disturbing. Now, I'm quite happy because at some point, well, I started, of course, to um, document everything everything where I have been and everything what happened in the newspapers. Now, I've been in Paris too. Um, when the Pope says, you know, a Christian cannot be anti-Semitic because we share the same rule. Well, this is not completely correct. No. Um, it's the worst thing when you tell somebody, well, I believe in Jesus as God and you do not. And why? Because you do not believe this. Well, you 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 cannot be um, you know, you cannot be blessed, and so on and so on. So, in last consequences, it is anti-Semitic when people say, "Yes, we believe in Jesus, but we do not. Uh, yes, we have a relationship with him. Um, yes, he is here, and so on. You know. But then, when a, a Jew comes. You know, he, he said, no, it's, um, you know, it's, uh, we cannot show it to him. You only have to believe in him. And this is something which is impossible to do because the, the scriptures say that, number one, the Messiah has to be a human from flesh and blood. That's number one. Number two, he has to keep the Torah. And because of the theology of Dr. Jürgen Bühler and the International Christian Embassy, and the ICEJ in general, and because of especially Malcolm Henning. People do not believe in the Torah anymore. They only believe in a miracle guy who can do everything but never shows up. But they themselves, they hate really to apply the Torah. They completely spiritualize everything. And so this became to a point that we are talking about two absolutely complete, absolute different religions. Christianity and Judaism. Christianity and Judaism. So um, I'm the missing link. Yes, I'm a Christian, I'm German, and so on and so on, but I cannot help it. So this is the key of David. This is the key of David. Yeah, it's written even. No? Qua etzion. Zion. So in Jerusalem, and my name actually is standing there, and the only thing I wanted to have, it's like a, a, a little clear up. That was it. So, so Joseph had a dream. Uh, his brother said to him, Do you intend to reign over what? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. So because of my dreams, guys, it's a sad story. Yeah, and of course, I'm totally dependent on... Um, other people, <laughs> yeah, that they finally uh, wake up. I said already, I said it's dream stream, you know. <laughs> I had big dreams, you know, and uh, a lot of things actually completely worked out. Unfortunately, so now we had like the destruction, as I said here from um, what is it called from the tornadoes in Nashville, and this is exactly where the sun eclipse, you know, um, here came in 21st August 2017, right over my address. So, and I said, okay, I wanted to uh, have a dream stream and tell the, um, you know, the whole Israel story in a completely new and fresh way. Absolutely legal, with a cool sign and with logos. And people hated me because of this. And every time I came, they said, what do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? This is what people are afraid of. Mm -hmm. Then he had another dream and he told it to his brother. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time 
The sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is th this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in his mind. So, we know the story from Jesus, you know, that he was, yeah, there was a star, star of Bethlehem. You know, for me, it's the moon. Very interesting thing, you know, it's the moon. Ah, here, here's the moon. So, super moon to appear on Purim, then Passover, an omen signifying imminent return of Davidic dynasty. So, the Davidic dynasty, you need the key of David. The key of David are my kids, and you can calculate it based on the star signs and dates in the Bible. And the Pope actually predefined it by naming my birthday the birth of the sun and the 21st 11th, 2004. This are 40 years Lumen Gentium. It's a law here. Lumen Gentium, 21st 11, 1964. Um, the 40 years Lumen Gentium equals seven, uh, 37 years and 180 days Eucharisticum Mysterium, which is from 25-5-1967. So this is the key of David described in 2 Samuel 5-5. The age when my kids were born. And because of my kids, I just wanted to have my, my legal right to execute my religion. And so far, was not able to do so because various issues. But now, as here Benjamin Netanyahu, now the, he will be Israel's last prime minister before Messiah. So he was standing already next to Yair and so on and so on and so on. And now he only has to go. And ask her over, go over to the International Christian Embassy and said, Hey, what, Jürgen? Is this actually true? Did you really, for the last five years, didn't do squat with your friend Ulf, with Ephraim? Is this really so? That's the only thing he had to do. And is this really so that there are so many other people who actually completely withheld the information? And that in Germany, the International Christian Embassy used yeah, you know, to really make exploits and make cash without telling what's happening would be awesome. Yeah? And it's just five minutes foot walk, five minutes foot walk over. <laughs> and you could solve all the problems, you could solve everything and so on and so on, even this one. And then just make a new deal. Thank you for your attention.